Well, joining us now in the Harvey Norman Lounge to share his inspiring story is Mark Kerr, who, after resigning from his job, just spent the last five months walking the length of the country to raise money for St John. Welcome, Mark. Thank you. I'm exhausted, but pleased to be here. That's yeah. right, you're allowed to sit down. Yeah, so you just finished at the end of June. Yes. And you walked bottom to top. Yeah. Any reason for that? Um, the reason was I only started at the end of January, and so I thought, well, I'll head from the bottom up to the winterless north, Nobo, as it's called, northbound, um, rather than starting and coming Sobo oh, yeah. and ending up in snow. Actually, that's a valid point. <laughs> yeah, that's right, a, that's yeah. a good move. <laughs> we thought move. about this. Yeah. Uh, but first of all, too, congratulations. What an incredible effort. I want to know why did you want to do this and why St John? Um, probably around 2003, uh, I'd read Jeff Chappell's first book uh, when he was talking about setting up the Te Araroa Trail, which um, is a single trail that runs from Cape Rianga all the way down to Bluff. And that captured my imagination, and I thought that's absolutely something that I want to do. And uh, then I spent the next 14 years saying, I'm going to do this, I'm going <laughs> to do this one day, and then one day it just, it just came to me. Mm -hmm. And I thought, no, this is the year that I'm going to do it. And so I resigned and, uh, and planned my, my journey. And I chose St John uh, for fundraising because I really felt that everyone in some point in their life will either utilise one or many of the services of St John or will have someone very dear to them that will need it. I agree. Yeah. Um, I've used them. So tell us about the actual walk. So you started in the south, came to the north. What were the highlights for you? Oh, gosh. Um, I, I can honestly say that it was five months of fantastic walking and experiences um, every single day. Every single day I would wake up and think, gosh, what am I going to experience and who am I going to meet today? Because I'd have no idea. It was truly extraordinary. How far were you averaging per day? Around 25 to 30, sometimes up to 40 kilometres a day. And, and did yeah. you plan where you were going to stay each night or did you just rely on the generosity of Kiwis? I did, I did to a point. Um, one of the things that I had to overcome when I was doing it was that sense of security around having somewhere to eat and sleep at mm. the end of each day. Mm. And so that was, that was a bit of a challenge for a start, but I had my tent, so I was, I was self-contained essentially. Wow. And so I could stay in dock huts, I could stay in hostels, backpackers, with hospitable New Zealanders, mm. or if it came to it, I could put my tent up as well. Right. So yeah. you're walking off road most of the time? You weren't walking just on roads? Um, I try not to walk on the roads too much. Mm. Uh, it's really not very pleasant. Um, around 13% of the, of the Te Araroa Trail is on road. Um, so I went and did uh, cycle trails that I'd wanted to do. I did some of Te Araroa backcountry trails, beaches, through mountains, forests, wow. slushing through mud. You must have met some incredible characters on the journey. Can you, you know, give us a sample? Like, were Southlanders more friendly than North Islanders? Were <laughs> Christchurch people more funny than, you know, perhaps Wellingtonians? It's really funny um, because... One of the first things people would say to me after they said, oh my God, I'd never do that, uh, was, uh, ha have you met any weirdos? <laughs> oh, God, there's, a, there's a few of them out there, let's be honest. And so, uh, and so no, I'm sorry to disappoint everyone, but I didn't. Right. And, and in actual fact, uh, everyone that I did meet throughout the country just reinforced the fact that New Zealanders, Kiwis are generous, humble, hospitable, you know, mm. people. So it was a life-changing experience for you? Yes. Yeah, yeah it absolutely was. I lost 20 kilos oh, for good. a start. Yeah. Wow. Yes. How many shoes did you <laughs> go through yeah, yeah. as well? Um, I ended up, I went through um, three pairs of shoes. So I, I'm on my, my third pair now. Right. Um, care of uh, MacPack. They, were, they sponsored these for me, which was fantastic because otherwise it was a solo walk that I did, did, did for myself. What did you learn about yourself from doing it? Um, I think I, it, it reinforced my independence, the fact that you can, um, you can pretty much tackle anything that you want to if you set your mind to it. And um, even though 3,000 plus kilometres sounds a lot, when you do it bit by bit, mm. 30 kilometres each day, 
and you know, essentially the sum of the parts. That is so impressive. Yeah, well done. Uh, thank you so much for Good coming work. along with today, Mark. And Mark's looking for a job. You can employ him right now if you want to. Um, he won't go off and walk the country again, he promises. Well, he probably doesn't actually. But if you want to see more <laughs> from Mark's amazing journey, you can go to his website, markwalksforlife.com, where you'll also be able to link to Mark's Everyday Hero fundraising page, currently at $8,346. Every cent donated will go directly towards helping St John continue oh. its life life-saving and life-changing work throughout New Zealand. Yeah, we've got to get that up. At least 10,000 by yes. the end of this show, OK? Yeah. So get on there right now. Yeah. I'll be checking. OK, <laughs> thanks, mate. <laughs>